Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought in our next lesson we would talk about creating some basic titles. Obviously, when you're editing your piece, you're going to need to create things like lower thirds to identify people inside of your edit. In this first part of our look at the Avid Basic Title Tool, we're going to show you how you can get into the title tool and how you can differentiate it between the title tool and the advanced marquee title tool. We're going to get in, we're going to create a basic text layout, we're going to add a drop shadow and a border to it, and I'm going to show you how you're going to save this out into your timeline and then be able to get back in and edit it very quickly. Okay, short introduction, let's just get into Media Composer and Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's alt tab into Avid's Symphony, obviously a command tab for all my Mac friends out there. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to call up a sequence that we were working on in a previous tutorial here. That's okay. You know what? I don't even need this top layer of video here, just so I have some cuts in between shots. What I want to do is I want to add a title over top of this shot right here. We're just simply going to call it BMXing. Now, to get to the title tool, very simple. You can have it mapped, obviously, over here onto your composer window. You can have it mapped to the keyboard, or I normally just access it right up here via clip, right here, new title. Now, what's going to happen is that once I select new title, you're going to see I'm now brought to a new prompt that says, okay, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to use the marquee title tool? Do you want to use the standard title tool? And once you make your decision, do you want to persist with that? Now, you'll remember back from our settings talk, if I was to select the basic title tool and select persist, what's going to happen is, is that once the title tool is opened and I end up closing it, I go back up to clip, I come down to new title, I'm not going to be given the option as to what title tool I want to open. What if I wanted to launch marquee? There doesn't seem to be a way for me to be able to do that now. Well, never fear. If we head back to our settings, if we come all the way down here to the marquee title tool right here, I'm just going to double click on it. You'll see right here. Do I want to create new title using the marquee title tool or the standard title tool or most importantly, ask me. And if I'm going to promote a title tool to marquee, do I want to do that? Do I want to yes do it? No, don't do it. Or do I want Media Composer Symphony to ask me? And do I want to back up titles on promote? Now in most cases, I just leave everything set to ask me and ask me this way. There's never any confusion. I always know what is going to happen. So all I'm going to do is simply say, OK, again, navigate back up to clip, come down to new title. In just a second, I'm going to be prompted as to what title tool I want to open. Let's just open the standard title tool. And now I'm brought to the standard Avid title tool. Now this title tool pretty much hasn't changed since I started using Media Composer way back at version 5.5. That was easily over 12 years ago. We've had a few additions added to it, but in most cases, it stayed fundamentally the same. Now, the first thing you're going to notice as soon as I get into the title tool is you're going to see that the background that the title tool has chosen is the frame that I happen to be landed on. Now, if I decided, you know what, I don't really want the title to be here. I actually want it to be down here. You know what, no problem. I can select anywhere in the timeline. Let's actually pick right there. That's a pretty nice shot. I can come back into the title tool and it will update immediately to show me that background. Now you're also going to notice that I have the title tool grid up here. Pardon me, the safe title grid up here, the safe title, safe action. And you're going to see that it's set up for standard 16 by 9. But what if I want it to be working in a 4 by 3 safe title safe mode? No problem. What I can do is with the title tool open, I can navigate back to my settings. I can simply come up to grid. Once I double click on it, it's actually going to appear behind the title tool. I'm just going to move that out of the way. There we go. And you'll see right now the scale mode is set to normal. I'll just bring the title tool back here. What I can do is say, you know what? I want this to be 4x3 inside of a 16x9 monitor. Once I select it, all I have to do is simply say apply. And you're going to see that once I go back into the title tool, that's going to adjust. Let's try that again. We'll say OK. There we go. It has now been updated. Now. That white is a little bit hard to see. So what I'm going to do is just simply come back into the grid. Let's just move the title tool out of the way here again. I'm just going to come to display here. And let's just choose a different color. Maybe we'll select, um, why don't we select purple? We'll say apply. I'll say OK. Even purple's not that easy to see here. I was thinking it might be a bit easier, but you know what? Maybe I'll just come back here. That will be a lot easier to see purple on. There we go. So you can see, you can actually get in and change the color of that grid based on the type of shot you're looking at. So no matter what it is, if it's a darker shot, lighter shot, you'll always have a title safe setup that will be right for you. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do here, just because normally I don't work in 
four by three safe when I'm working at my house here. But what I'll do is just come over here. I'm just going to switch back to normal. We'll say apply and say okay. And there we go. The title tool is set back to normal. I'll just leave it as the purple title safe for now. That's fine. And let's talk about just creating standard text. Now, creating standard text is very easy because you'll see that the title tool defaults to the text tool. So what I'm going to do is just simply type in BMXing, just like such. Now, if we want to take this text and reposition it from where it is right now, we can just navigate right over here to the selection tool. We can now take it and move it wherever we want. Now, you're also going to notice that as soon as I select the text, a bounding box has appeared around it. Now, what is that bounding box used for? Well, it's used for text justification. You'll see right now, text is sitting left justified. If I take the bounding box and stretch it all the way over to the edge of title safe there, you can see, like I said, we are left justified. To get in and change that, very easy, you'll see your justification is located right down here below the actual text itself. Now, for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm just going to select my favorite font because nothing says shouting in your face like impact. There we go. Very nice. Now, you're going to notice that as soon as I select the text, the bounding box will automatically reset itself. So let's just stretch it right back over here. And let's take the text size and we'll just increase it. We'll just double it here. We'll put it at about 96. I think that's pretty good. And we're just going to center it up here. Now, again, like I said, we're going to take the bounding box over to the edge of title safe. I'm just simply going to come over here and just say center that text up. And there we go. Text is nice and centered in the middle of the screen. Now, if I was happy with this text and I wanted to save it out to my bin to drop into my timeline, no problem. What I can do is simply navigate up to file. I can come down to save title as. I'm going to be prompted by Media Composer to say, well, what do you want to call this title? So I'm simply going to call it again, much like I called it in the title tool, BMXing. It's going to save into the sequences bin. I don't have any other bins open, so that's my only option. What drive do I want to save it onto? Well, of course, I want to save it onto my external drive. And what resolution do I want to save it as? We'll save it as DNX HD 90. I could fast save it and send it out to my bin unrendered, but I'm not going to do that for right now. What I'm going to do is simply say save. You're going to see what's going to happen is that the title is going to get saved into the bin and the title tool will reopen exactly the way I had it before, ready for me to create more titles. I'm not going to do that because what I can do right now is simply mark an endpoint and hit B on my keyboard. And now you're going to see when I hit play here, we're going to have our guys BMXing and there is our BMXing title. Now, what if I wanted to get in and make an adjustment to this title? It's actually very easy to do. With the recent update of Media Composer 6.5, what I now have the option of doing is instead of having to go into effects mode and coming up here to edit title, all I have to do is simply right click on the title itself and I can select edit title. Once I do, what's going to happen is, is that I'm going to be prompted, much like you'll remember, I selected inside of my marquee title tool settings that I wanted to be prompted. Do I want to promote this title to marquee? No, I do not. What I now have is the BMXing title that I had before, and I can get in. Let's just say I wanted to just take it and move it up here. What I'm going to do is just move it up there. I'm just simply going to say save. It'll save that out, and you can see the title has been updated and is now in the upper left-hand corner. But of course, we don't want it in the upper left-hand corner because I want to stylize this up a little bit more. What I'm going to do Simply say edit title. We'll come back in. I do not want to promote it. Let's put that title back where I had it before, roughly in the middle like that. Okay, so let's talk about something very basic that you're going to want to add to your title. And of course, I'm talking about a drop shadow. Now, how we access drop shadows, very simple. It's actually located right down here. Now, I could come in and add a number value for the shadow depth. Let's say something around the lines of maybe three. And as soon as I do, you're going to see that the title defaults to having the drop shadow down and to the right. And you can actually see it represented right here, well, which would probably mean that I could probably take that shadow and drag it out wherever I want it to go. You can see, very cool, to have this control over it inside of the title tool. Now, of course, going along with that, you're going to see that the shadow itself is very hard edged. And I want to get in and soften that up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do just that. I'm going to soften that shadow. Now, the shortcut to soften that shadow on Windows, Control, Shift, and H, as in ham, Command, Shift, and H on Mac. You'll see I'm now brought to the soft shadow box. And I can choose the softness that I want. In this case, I'm just going to choose four. And I'm simply going to say apply. And you'll see that that shadow has now been softened. I can come in, maybe make it even 12, simply say apply. 
and you can see you can get in and really start to create some very nice looking drop shadows. Now, of course, I'm just going to say apply here. We'll actually close the window. I can save this out at any time. We'll just simply say save. And of course, that's going to be updated in my timeline right away. Again, I'm just going to come back into edit title. Because I want to talk about, obviously, the next most important thing when you're working with a title, we pick the standard white color, and, you know, white is kind of a little bit boring. Now, what we're going to do in this case, I'm just going to select the title. I'm just going to turn the drop shadow off for a second here, because I want to get in and I want to adjust the color of this text, because, like I said, white, pretty boring. Let's just change the color and make it blue. So what we're going to do is we're going to navigate over here into the middle, and this fill shadow border, the first row here, the first row of... Uh, color pickers here is what's going to choose the color of our fill, our shadow, and our border. So let's change the fill color. What I'm going to do is simply select the color white, and I'm going to hold it, and I'm just going to drag that window up a little bit. Now I can get in, and using the Title Tool Color Picker, I can choose whatever color I want. I can eye drop a color if I want to, or I can simply come in, choose the gray scale here, any color that I happen to want on there. I can come up to the color wheel, really pick whatever color I want here, and I can even get in and choose sort of shades of that color as well. Now I said I was going to go with blue. Well, you know what? Even purple's not too bad. So why don't I just choose purple? I'm just going to close that for a second because let's move down. We were talking about the shadow next. So let's add a shadow back in here. Maybe we'll make it four here. Actually, I think I'll probably make it a lot more just for the purposes of seeing it. And I think I'm going to make this shadow white. There we go. Because what we can also do that's very cool here, I'm just going to come back down to four is I can actually soften the shadow up a little bit here. Control, Shift, and H on Windows. Command, Shift, and H on the Mac. We'll just punch in a value of 12. I'll simply say Apply. And now it looks like we have a little bit of a white glow going on here. Very nice. And if you want to see it a little bit better, I can bring it over top of our BMXing guy. Very cool. So you can almost create basic glows inside of the title tool with a simple drop shadow trick. Now, last but certainly not least, we have the border option, which I haven't talked about yet. So again, let's come back here. What I'm going to do is let's just turn this off here. I'll just simply say apply. We'll say OK. And I'm just going to put my drop shadow uh, distance to be zero. And let's talk about that edge or that stroke, or in this case, in Media Composer and Symphony, it's called the border color. Now, I'm just going to pick a border color, even though I don't actually have a border yet. And I'm just going to pick sort of a nice bright red color. Now, how we actually turn the border on is very easy. What we're going to do is we're going to navigate right over here to the lower left-hand corner of the Title Tool. And you're going to see that we have three boxes. We have the Box Corner Tool, we have the Border Width Tool, and we have the Arrowhead Tool. Now, because we are talking about the border and the border width, you can see that we can click on that. We can now choose whatever border width we want. So I'm going to come in and choose yeah, sort of that one there. And you can see now that we now have a border around our text. And of course, it is the color that I chose. Now, we can also get in. We can make that a lot thinner if we wanted to. Or, of course, we can come in and choose whatever width we want by punching in the number manually. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. You can see now that we've gotten in. We've talked about actually creating text. We've talked about getting in and adjusting the fill, the shadow, and the border color. We've also talked about creating shadows and creating borders around your text. So basically what I've given you now is I've really given you the tools that you're going to need to get in and just to create some very basic titles inside of the title tool. Okay, now in part two, we're going to talk about more basics inside of the Avid title tool. We're also going to take a look at creating some basic shapes and I'm going to give you a little bonus and show you how to create a very quick animation using a layered title inside of the title tool. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.